soft mandibular ganglion soft mandibular ganglion is another parasympathetic ganglion and uh, we need to cover it in detail and what kind of uh, which gland supplied by this ganglion and again let me remind you by foramen ovale which which nerves uh, go through uh, foramen ovale you have mandibular division v3 okay and if you remember v3 is going to split into anterior division and the posterior division the posterior division is going to give lingual nerve auriculotemporal nerve and inferior alveolar nerve correct so here is the inferior alveolar and this is lingual and then auriculotemporal nerve okay when we talk about uh, parasympathetic fibers related to V3, uh, we have to talk about two major ganglia. The first one is otic, the second one is submandibular. So this is the otic ganglion and this is submandibular ganglion. Submandibular ganglion, okay? Those are the two parasympathetic ganglia related to V3. And here is foramen ovale, not to forget that. Okay, submandibular ganglia, keep in mind that the parasympathetic root of submandibular ganglia is coming originally from facial nerve. So here is facial nerve, cranial nerve number seven, is going to send this branch, we we'll call it corda, Tympani nerve, the corda tympani nerve is joining it lingual, then it's going to send its preganglionic fibers, which is going to stop here at the ganglion, submandibular ganglion, and from there, the postganglionic fibers is going to supply submandibular gland, submandibular gland. However, the, the, the fibers which is going to sublingual is going, sublingual gland is going back to the lingual nerve carried by the lingual nerve until it reaches to sublingual gland. Remember here is a tongue. Lingual is going to the anterior two thirds of the tongue. And here is again the posting ganglionic fibers is rejoining the lingual until it reaches to the sublingual gland. Sublingual gland. So, very simple. Again, here is a facial nerve. Facial nerve send the corda tympani or corda tympani, which join lingual, a branch of V3. Then the preganglionic fibers is going to stop here in the submandibular ganglion. The postganglionic fibers. You have the postganglionic fibers that go directly to submandibular gland, and the one which is going to sublingual has to go again and join lingual nerve until it reaches close to the sublingual gland. Okay, so two salivary glands supplied by submandibular ganglion. Okay, how about otic ganglia again? Just a quick revision. Otic ganglia is receiving is going to receive preganglionic fiber through this nerve. This nerve, what is the name of this nerve? Lesser superficial vitrosal nerve. Lesser superficial vitrosal nerve. Again, it's coming through foramen ovale. Lesser superficial vitrosal nerve. And the preganglionic fiber is, will stop here in the otic ganglion. Then from there is going to join auriculotemporal nerve. Auriculotemporal nerve is traveling through parotid gland. And here is the postganglionic fibers is going to supply this gland. What is lesser, lesser, how lesser superficial vitrosal uh, coming through foramen uh, coming through foramen ovale? But where it comes from? 
It's coming from glossopharyngeal. Is it direct branch? No, it's not direct branch from glossopharyngeal. So where is glossopharyngeal nerve? Inside cranial cavity, leaving cranial cavity through jugular foramen. This is number nine. Here is jugular foramen. Once it comes out through jugular foramen, is giving tiny branch. This tiny branch is called tympanic. Tympanic getting into petrous bone and inside the petrous bone is going to form a plexus of nerves in the inner surface of tympanic membrane. This plexus will send lesser nerve. That's why if you go and look inside the cranial cavity you will see a groove located in the anterior surface of the petrous bone for lesser petrosal nerve and I will show you that. So this is a tympanic branch forming a tympanic plexus and from there lesser petrosal traveling through foramen ovale stopping otic ganglion, post ganglionic fiber is going here to join oroclotumbran nerve and from there to parotid. Okay? Okay. Remember in my introduction I said uh, that you have for each ganglion you have sensory root you have uh, parasympathetic root you have sympathetic root the functional root is parasympathetic the functional root is parasympathetic so where is the sensory root here coming from v3 and also the sensory root here is coming from v3 from mandibular where is the sympathetic root sympathetic root coming from superior cervical ganglion superior cervical ganglion so sympathetic stop here the preganglionic and from there the postganglionic fibers is going to join or first travel with the blood vessels is going to travel with the blood vessels and form a plexus around the blood vessels until it reaches to this ganglia and pass without relay without stop and again similar here to some mandibular ganglion is going also without stop and remember that the function of parasympathetic fibers is to induce secretion of this gland and contrary to the sympathetic which decrease secretion of the gland okay okay Keep in mind that lingual nerve has dangerous position related to the last molar and we covered this before. And keep in mind that if there is any injury to lingual nerve, you might lose the function of corda tympani also, especially in this location. Thank you.